Welcome to Broncolor's How-To Video, Part 2. Hello, I'm Urs Reicher, photographer and consultant at Broncolor. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, commercial photographer and photography instructor. And we are here to show you how-to. So Urs, why don't you tell the good people exactly what how-to is? Well, Carl, How To is a fantastic educational resource from Brown Color. We've created lots of reference images, each one with its own lighting diagram and description. That's right, Urs. And to access this great information, you simply need to follow Brown Color through their website or like them on their Facebook page for regular updates. So, Urs, on this uh, product shot, I'm just using uh, a softbox, a 30 by 120 through the side here. Mm -hmm diffusing it through a sheet of frosted perspex uh, to get this lovely line of light, this diffused light down the uh, side and neck of the bottle. If you take the diffuser away, it's just too sharp or why you, do you use it? Well, yeah, absolutely. The light from the softbox will be a very clean, sharp edge line um, and too defined in the bottle. And I just okay. want to get a more feathered diffused light. And then uh, on my surface here, I've just got a reflective surface to give a mirror image of the, uh, the bottle in that okay. surface. That's just a, a mirror? No, it's not a mirror. No, it's, a, it's actually a sheet of high gloss metal. It's polished metal and it just gives a very clean reflection. Sometimes with a mirror, you know, you get that double image reflection. Of course, yeah, yeah, so this right. gives you a single image. And then um, on the front, additionally, I've got a light, these Pico lights with the projection attachments on. That's just illuminating our labels here and here. And um, yeah, just, pr yeah, just yeah, basically right. yeah, uh, concentrating that beam of light. And then that lovely glow of light that's coming through the back, giving us the back lighting through the bottle. If we go mm -hmm. around and take a look at that. So basically I've just got a standard um, dish on the light and a honeycomb grid, and that's just putting that ball of light through the, uh, the frosted perspex right. um, and giving us that result. I've seen you playing with the, the focusing. Yes, yeah, because the, uh, the Pulso uh, light has the focus adjustment, I can adjust the beam and the feather of the light a little bit. So what I do is I experiment with the feather of the light and mm. also pushing the light backwards and forwards to get the, the best okay. result. And so the focusing is like a fine adjustment of the, of the grid and on the, on, the, on the light beam. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's uh, try and get a couple of shots. So I'm just going to give you this piece of silver card, Urs, right. if you can just bounce a little bit of light onto the uh, neck of the bottle Something for me. like this. Something like that. Yep, that looks about right. And let's focus. And yeah, that's looking good. I saw you spring the bottle before, Carl. Yeah, it's a special uh, mixture we give to just give it this uh, cold look, the sort of condensation oh, look. Yeah. But it's it's solid. It yeah, it, it sets uh, it sets rock hard, so the droplets don't move and then they don't uh, evaporate. Great. Um, it's a special mixture that we create to put on the bottles. How do you create it? Tell me. Uh, well, <laughs> that's the secret, Urs. You'll have, ah, to, come on. you'll have to check out our pro level training and uh, find out our best secrets. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we have a fantastic painting with flash tutorial. And don't forget, you can find more great how-tos on Broncolor's website. So, as uh, a model lying on the floor always has me a little bit worried. What's, what's yep. going on here? Uh, it's no reason to be worried, you know. Okay. It's a shot I plan to do as a product shot. But uh, as you know, my luggage got lost on the, on the way coming here. <laughs> so uh, I have to change this, you know. And what I'm going to try is flash painting. Okay. So it's not light painting, you know. Light painting is like continuous, continuous light, you yeah. know. But 
then worries, you know, because uh, she's moving, you know. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. the idea is that I have multiple poppings, you know, right. like... Uh, so bang, 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 flash exactly. each time. Exactly. A sequence of 30, 40 flashes, and every body part is hit by one flash only. One beam of light. Exactly. So you're going to do these 30, 40 flashes over, what, like a 20-second exposure? Yes, I have... Uh, a good rhythm is like having two flashes per second. Yep. So if I go for 30 flashes, I have 15 seconds exposure time. If I go for 40 flashes, if we shoot full body, I might need 40 flashes. So I go for right. 20 seconds exposure time. So what's that one doing then? Yes, this uh, normal reflector with the most narrow honeycomb grids is yep. for the face only. Okay, so that's the light we can see there with that exactly. modeling lamp. Yeah. But this is gonna flash as well then? Yes, but once only. Right. Only once. I could do this as well with the same light, you know, but the face needs uh, a light that comes more from the camera axis. Right. If I light her face with a very hard light like this, doesn't really look nice, you know. Okay, this gotcha. is a perfect light with a narrow angle to, to shape yeah. uh, or to, to, to emphasize on the texture of the body, yeah, of, yeah. Of the body and so on. Yeah? But effectively then, for one flash on this, you're going to have to run that off a separate power pack or a separate exactly. light source. Yeah. Okay. You need two packs. This one is firing once only. And then the pico light connected to the second one, which is firing now. Give you uh, your interval. Exactly, 40, 40 right. flashes. Yeah. Well, Very important, uh, on this pack, you have to switch off the cell. Right, okay, so Otherwise, it's not triggering each time as well. Exactly, and the important thing is, you know, that every part of the body is hit by one flash only. Right, so, so it's I not going to overexpose. Yeah. Not going to overexpose and not going to double expose. Sure. Okay, because I need one shoulder, a sharp shoulder, a sharp elbow, a sharp hand, a sharp hip, and so on and so on. Fantastic. And then in all together then should give a sharp body landscape. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, let's, let's go let's for it. Let's try it. Huh? Okay. So with the, uh, yes, the modeling light here, I switch this off. Uh, and then here with the modeling light on, I go to the start position. If you, if you could hold me the cable over there, please. Go to the start position. Okay, let's turn the lights off. Yeah. Ready? Yep, and trigger the camera. I do the hair first, a little bit of face, then down the arm, go back on the body, a little higher here, all the way down to the legs, don't forget the feet, and then to the other side, and just finish this. All right. Let's have a look at the result. Wow, that looks great. That Fantastic, Fantastic yeah. yeah. So you've got all those little pockets of light grazing yeah. across the body. Right. It always makes sense to have a close look at the sharpness, you know, because anyway, we have an exposure time of like uh, 20 seconds, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you see, as I'm, w when I expose here, there's nothing happening here. And yeah. I have, let's say, these dark areas always in between two flashes. Yeah. They guarantee that it's a completely sharp shot and you won't see the, the smallest double exposure. It's everything completely yeah. sharp. Looks sharp, looks great. Fantastic. Don't forget to like us on Facebook for regular updates and look out for more great how-to tips in part three and by following Broncolor on their website.